Welcome back. On Viewpoint today, we shed light on the efforts by a special team of middle-aged Asian-American women who are essentially encouraging their counterparts worldwide to embrace age and all the experiences that come with it. Now, for more on this, I have the two co-founders of Ajumma EXP Live on the line. Now, first then, Leanne Kim, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Sunhi. So happy to be here. Right. And Sonia Sonchin, it's also a pleasure to have you with us, Sonia. Thank you so much. I am so humbled and honored. Right. Thank you for making time for us. Then, Leanne, do start by telling us a bit about why, when, and how Ajumma EXP was founded. So five years ago, on my 47th birthday, I was planning to go out with a bunch of girlfriends to have a sexy night in the town. They showed up at my house, all stuffed in a van, and they dressed up as traditional ajumas as a surprise. You know, the short, tight wigs, the visors, the big clothes, and they brought me a wig. And I thought, this is hilarious. So we ended up dressing up and going out on the town, and I thought that we were gonna create such a ruckus because, I mean, look at us, right? And it was so interesting. We were completely invisible. People just saw us as a bunch of old ladies in the corner, and of course, we're not used to that. And it made me really think deeply about middle-aged women. As we grow older, we do become less relevant in society and more invisible. And most of my girlfriends are, are Korean. And so we were talking about the idea of ajma and how even that word has become irrelevant and almost has disappeared. So Sonia and I had a quick meeting and we said, what can we do about this to uh, shine a spotlight, a positive spotlight and reclaim that word ajma? And so that's how Ajima EXP came to be. We decided on that name because it was close to like BTS and something like, uh, you know, Ajima Experience, Ajima Experiment, Ajima Expression, um, and it worked. Right, well, I love it. And so yeah, as we see in the video, it seems that much of Ajima's EXP's interaction with the public is through flash mobs. So was this the intention from the start? And if so, why? When Lee and I started the movement, as she had mentioned, we talked about various things and wanting to celebrate uh, middle age and the concept of being courageous, fearless, unexpected, and have a memorable and fun experience while doing all of that. We tossed around several ideas of what could we do to make a mark, to be notable, to be relevant. Why not a flash mob dance? Most of us have not done this. Most of us have not even conjured the concept of getting out there and doing it. So we said, let's let's do that. Who would expect Ajumas to go out there and flash dance? We are not dancers, although we love to dance. So it takes a lot of courage to get out there, to stretch our comfort level, and all the while trying to remember all the steps and keep our tight wigs in place. And of course, have a ton of fun. Right. And that being said, Leanne, what was your crew's first, first that is, flash mob like? And what was the public response to it? Okay, so you just saw the video of our very first flash mob. We wanted to make it easy, so we just crashed a party. We crashed the gala at the San Diego Asian Film Festival here in California. And um, it, we looked like a bunch of ladies who just jumped off a tour bus and maybe we showed up at the wrong hotel. And um, people were really confused because they were all dressed up in black tie and in gowns and we looked like traditional ajumas. And then they realized that this was a thing and the change in their face and just their surprise and joy. I mean, they pulled out their cell phones, they gave us the space, they let us throw down, and they realized that this was something different that they had never seen before. And I'll tell you what, Sunhi, it was so invigorating. And there's something about putting on the Ajuma costume, and we all know that Ajumas in Korea don't look like that anymore, but putting on that costume, there's a certain freedom because we're kind of anonymous too, as well. And so it just, we're able to just really freely express ourselves in this way. And after that, we got a little addicted. So we've been doing it um, for five years ever since. Oh, and you know, five more years, hopefully again. So yeah, who's in charge of choreography and how do you schedule practice sessions around your professional lives? Because I am aware that quite a number of your crew are Ajumas with careers. That's right. 
Well, our, choreograph our choreography begins by choosing a music piece by a female artist. We've danced to J.J. Fad's Supersonic, Missy Elliott's Liz Control, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation, and our more recent one was Britney Spears' Make It Work. We hire a choreographer named Melissa Adele, who is also a Najima. Melissa creates a choreography that is so fun, uh, very doable, because as mentioned, we are not dancers, and has many noticeable dance moves, such as Gangnam Style. Um, one of the segments you just saw was uh, Fortnite flossing. We incorporate the cha-cha-cha, the Carlton, the cabbage patch, just to name a few. We uh, start this um, in the fall, several months in advance of the schedule of Flash Mob, which um, the schedule of Flash Mob is typically January in honor of Korean American Day. And it allows us to be flexible with our schedules. And you are right, a lot of our uh, ajumas are professionals with careers. They're also very busy uh, moms and other Sonia, can you hear me? Okay, I think uh -oh. we have... Right, there's been a connection problem right there. I'll turn to you, Leanne, in the meantime then. How does an Ajima like myself, nearing 50, who is very much interested in your mission, join your crew? I love that question, Sunhee. And you can, even from Korea, you can be part of our virtual crew because we're all so connected, right, through um, technology and the internet. However, if you want to be part of our um, flash mob, you have to be in San Diego. And people ask, well, should you, do you have to be Korean? And I'm sorry, but there's a lot of non Korean uh, middle aged women around the world, and we want to celebrate them too through the Ajima experience. So we actually have quite a number, not a, a quite a number, but maybe like 30% of non-Koreans on um, our crew. We have some women who are white. We even had a, um, an African-American member. And it's just about being willing to put yourself out there, put in the work and understand that this word Ajima, its origination comes from Korea and, and all what it comes with, that word Ajima has so much, they work hard, they have sacrificed so much to make sure that their family is taken care of. And that's why they had the, the permed hair long ago because they didn't have time to you know do their hair. They had to wash and go and just wear comfortable clothing. So when we are dressed as, as ajumas for our crew, we're really honoring the lineage of all those women in Korea and, and around the world before us who really put in the sacrifice to allow us to be where we are. Right, that's a valid point right there. Sonia, how has being a part of the Ajima EXP perhaps affected you personally? First of all, I never thought I would wear a tight permed wig <laughs> and come out there and do a, a flash dance. Um, I have personally had to come out of my comfort zone and, um, you know, and just embrace this. But mostly what I love the most about our whole Ajima EXP experience the um, is the fact that we meet new Ajimas all the time and the they bring with and them a lifelong journey and um, that's very inspiring. In fact, one of my favorite aspects of Ajima EXP is our Ajima Spotlights, which is on our website. I'll do a write-up about an Ajima and talk a little bit about her and find out about who she is. And I can't tell you that how much that is inspiring for me and also humbles me and strengthens me. My life was pretty simple and small, and now um, my little contribution to Ajima EXP has brought smiles to so many people. And look, we even get to speak with you. This is pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you for that. Leanne, what has the experience been like for you? Oh, it's been such a joy. And um, just the fact that we're on Arirang TV and we've um, been connected. Like, I was born in, in Seoul, South Korea, and I came to the United States when I was one. And um, even though I'm American, my heart is very, very Korean. And I'm so glad that here in America that 
we can still feel that Korean culture and be connected all the way across the ocean with our brothers and sisters through Ajima EXP. That's number one. And number two, here in America, there has been this tremendous rise of anti-Asian hate, and in particular, violence against Asian American women. And so, of course, Ajima EXP yeah. at this I moment in time me means you know, even, like, even more. And what you're looking at right now what, is also another crazy. wonderful experience. Not, we were asked you know, to be part of a, a, a music music video of a very famous Korean American hip hop artist dumbfounded and uh, we would never have imagined that but um, apparently no one else is doing this Ajima gig so we're the only ones in town <laughs> so if anybody else needs a group of dancing Ajimas to kind of whoop it up just um, reach out to us and we'll probably respond to the call <laughs> right will do <laughs> will do Sonia let's uh, have a few words then on your cruise plans for the rest of this year so we have a few more interesting events coming up in the next 12 months. Um, first of all, Leanne mentioned the Dumbfounded video. There will be a widespread public release of that music video to Dumbfounded's rap called Secret Menu, which was premiered at the South by Southwest Film Festival. Uh, we are on the radar with the White House to uh, be invited back to join the nation's leaders to celebrate Asian Pacific Heritage Month in May. And in short order, Lee and I will have to get together again to start planning our next Ajima EX. Right, Sonia, you were And with, with all this attention, um, I think we will have the biggest Ajima dance crew ever. And then the sky's the limit. Right, I'll keep my fingers crossed for that. Thank you so Thank much, you. Sonia and Leanne, for making yeah, time to join us live. Thank you so much to from Thank one Ajima. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you.